And the second biggest pollution in the world is electromagnetic pollution. And we're being bombarded by that. And that's because uh, ever since Tesla, you know, and Tesla knew nothing about biology. Uh, and quite, you know, his, his uh, AC motors and all that are, are, and AC electricity is one of the things that are wearing us down. But um, the uh, electromagnetic pollution is everywhere. There is a lot you can do about it. The good news is you, there's a lot you can do about it. But um, the truth is that you have to regenerate faster than you degenerate. You have to stay stronger. And this is easily doable now. And uh, this is where my products are focused. It's in, it's in giving you the sleep you need so you can get physiological repair. And that, that includes physiological brain repair. Because people aren't sleeping, they're not going down into the deep brain waves when, at night. That's why they keep waking up. That's why they wake up tired. And did you know that just driving to work is enough to sit off cortisol and lower your immune system? Well, did you know that m m most heart attacks, they say, are caused or started when you're in traffic? It's, it's, it's a tremendous assault on you. And then the drive home from 4 to 6 at night uh, is when your adrenals need to be resting. It's really siesta time in civilized societies. Uh, but the drive home is enough to sit off the cortisol and, and other <laughs> things in your body that you are not going to sleep. You're not going to sleep, and, and this is leaving everybody in a form of jet lag. And if you're a road rager, Melon, you're in deep trouble. Oh, yeah, you hurt yourself more than you ever hurt anybody else. Um, so, um, uh, the, you know, so, uh, w so what I've done is focus on how to help people do this and in an easy way and non-invasive, using, using uh, very special uh, wavelengths of light and, and, and LEDs that, that, uh, and ways of modulating light uh, that are absolutely amazing. And everyone gets it immediately. And, and in every program, everybody gets a free photo facial. Uh, you actually, people can see a difference in their face right after the first session. And that's a side effect of, of getting the body to go into regeneration. Now, when when all this occurred to you, and you you know you picked up this kind of knowledge, it, obviously you went out and did your homework too, right? Well, you have to. You know, uh, the other side can give you ideas, but you have to do the work. You have to go do the fundraising. You <laughs> you have to convince people, because just having access or you know having keys to the city doesn't mean you can control anybody, and you probably have to pay for your cup of coffee too. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you're on the other side, did you ever come back with the rationale of what the heck are we doing here? What's this all about, Alfie? Oh, yes, yes. That was one of the questions I asked on the other side, and it may shock people. I, I literally asked, okay, what's the plan? And the light just lovingly laughed and said, there is no plan, there never was. What? You were given this universe to make of it what you will, and you're free to do that. And so what's really important is, is not thinking what God wants you to do or what, you know, the universe wants you to do, is the only meaning there is in life is the meaning you give to life. The only meaning to any God you believe in is the meaning you give to that. Hold it. This experience had a profound effect on you to the point that you have now picked up, and I don't know whether it was just knowledge or was it guidance where you've learned things about, you know, the future, earth changes, your own life, destiny for all of us? Are, are you almost like on a mission? Well, I, I'm, I'm on a mission of uh, health and also uh, a mission of what, what is called self-initiation. We're coming into a period now where, uh, especially, you know, the example is, uh, like what just happened to the economy. Uh, why are we all listening to these people? Why did we listen to them? They turned out they didn't know that much, and they were uh, and they they were they were manipulating us. And I think a lot of huge mistakes were made. So we're coming into a point now of self initiation, and that's uh, if I'm on any mission, it's to create heaven on earth. Well, you're you're, you're getting there now. Are there other people like you out there doing the same thing? Is this almost like an army of people that have died and have come back? Well, um, uh, in one of my visits with the light, uh, I was told that the near-death experience, this is, you know, way back then, 
I was told that the near-death experience would become more and more popular and it would have an effect on the entire world when a critical mass was hit where all these people have died and come back um, and are telling you that it's, uh, you know, there's a lot more going on than, than what we think. It, it's uh, getting over the fear of death is one of the first phases of self-initiation because once you get over the fear of death and realize that you are you have been alive forever already and you will be alive forever no matter what um, that um, in fact no one can manipulate you the, the old fears don't manipulate you anymore although I have no fear of death I respect life more and more um, I used to skydive and rock climb and all that and uh, after my near-death experience I respect life so much that I wouldn't dare take a chance on throwing it away on something so frivolous so it's given me um, a respect for life not a fear and um, as we move into the future um, we're going to start realizing that um, this whole thing about prophecy mm -hmm. um, um, is uh, most of I was told on the, on the uh, when I'm with the light that uh, all the all the true ancient prophecies will end in our lifetime and they will be no more and they all have to deal with the end of the world don't they they sure do and we're going to get past that point of this end of the world and in fact you know the end of the world has a history people should check it out how many times have prophets told people there was there was going to be an end of the world every civilization <laughs> you know everyone <laughs> and and also the, the the odd thing about prophecy is that most prophets have not ever been right and in fact if they get one thing right in their life that's a that's a career and uh so that uh uh do you know who's been more accurate about predicting the future than prophets i would say well this is a quiz right but i would say edgar casey was one of them he was interesting, but there have been people more accurate than him. And uh, uh, Nostradamus? No, course, not at all. Most, uh, not at all. I was shown that um, that the, the people that have been the most accurate about predicting the future have been the fantasy writers. Good point. They have been more Good accurate point. than anybody. And uh, like, and I was given a lesson of say Jules Verne. Remember right. Jules Verne? Absolutely. And. Um, uh, in my book, is called The Jules Verne's Effect. And I was shown that Jules Verne wrote about things that did not exist, technologies did not exist in his time. And all the children that read those books went out and invented those things and more. Isn't that interesting? But something happened to him, Mellon. I don't know whether he was a time traveler or a remote viewer or what, but something happened to him to allow him to have a vision of the future. Absolutely, and so uh, I was also taught about Star Trek, the Star Trek effect on the planet, um, uh, uh, who was a Gene, Gene, Gene Roddenberry. Roddenberry. Uh, unbelievable, the, the, uh, the material he pulled in. And I was shown that uh, at any given moment on planet Earth now, Star Trek is being shown somewhere, and it's well, constantly in, in consciousness. And, and I was told that everything you see on Star Trek will be manifested and the, the children that watch this will make all of that including the replication technologies all of that it is coming and some of it's here now or oh, absolutely i mean during even though dick tracy had that watch he talked into mm -hmm. uh star trek also had those little handheld devices mm -hmm. that were like cell phones and and didn't they heal with light too amazing yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely so uh so uh uh, so the thing about prophecies is that we've got to get over this end of the world stuff and get past it. But I was also shown, and I and I be honestly believe most biblical scholars know this, and some of them tell you the truth, is that most of the prophecies you've ever heard about, the ancient ones, already have happened. They were they were written for people in their own times and were yes, fulfilled were. in their own times. But and, this is what concerns me about prophecy, though, in end times. Mm -hmm. Eventually, one of them is going to get it right. Well, there is not going to be an end time. And that's, that's why this is all going to end um, within the next couple of generations. We're going to actually transform. This is why the near-death experience is really big on helping us transform. And we're going to transform over the next 75 to 100 years into completely different creatures than we know now. Is it going to be gradual? or? Well, it's Dang. been gradual. In fact, uh, the amazing thing that I was shown is that we're technically there now. 
we're at a time that's never happened before in history. We're technically at a time in history where we can transcend survival en masse. We can technically clothe, comfort, feed, and educate every human on Earth right now. 